right, I've got to say it was with some surprise and disappointment that I learnt last Friday of the withdrawal from the Wellington mayoral race of its most colourful uh, can and headline-grabbing candidate. He's a man I've known um, uh, as a friend for a few years, um, slightly mad bugger, and I thought was injecting some interest into um, local body politics and the mayoral race in Auckland. Um, but on Friday, he decided, like a wimp, he basically wimped out. He walked away. Having talked a good game, suddenly all the fury and sound was over and he just looked like a hollow shell of a posturing politician. I just want to get him wound up. Uh, a warm welcome, please, to former mayoral candidate for Auckland, Mr Leo Malloy. Leo, welcome to the platform. Morning, Sean. Morning, all the listeners out there. You did introduce me as being a Wellington mayoral candidate. Oh, sorry, sorry. Auckland mayoral yeah. candidate. Yeah. What? Yeah. You're a bit of a quitter, aren't you, Leo? No, it's, it's like a Muhammad Ali rope a dope type technique. Um, we uh, were firm. Oh, can I get serious for a start? Then I'll have the fun with you. Yeah. So the serious bit was this. That clearly, as I said at the press conference, it was a bit like Princess Diana's marriage. It was a wee bit crowded. I think we're in that centre right space. So uh, instead of cutting it three ways, we, based on our last poll, we arrived at the inevitable conclusion that we weren't going to win it, me personally, and the centre right was definitely not going to win it, split three ways. And in the interest of doing what was right, for Auckland, for the city, I decided that the other two were apparently live only entered at 10 o'clock on Friday morning, in case you didn't know. Mm. By 11.59 on Friday, you had to either enter or withdraw. If I had stayed in past 11.59, my name would have stayed on the ballot papers. And given that we were slightly ambivalent about our prospects, I wouldn't have been able to put my heart and soul into it, which would have meant that I would have attracted probably thirty or 40,000 votes just based on recognition, name recognition. And that would have completely um, screwed the scrum. I would have orchestrated the result of the election, and I didn't want to be guilty of that. So we made, we had been discussing for some time, plan A, plan B, plan C. And a lot of our generous donors and supporters were sitting waiting for the last six weeks for the second last poll, which was came out for us Thursday night. So, Leo, you are on. really spinning this as it is a far better thing I do now than I have ever done before. Well, let's make it clear. This is something of a hospital pass. And the person who does win, you would hope, will have some courage, some spine, and be able to deal with the mess that they're inheriting, which pretty much eliminates most of the candidates. It only really leaves you one viable candidate. But my view is that same person, um, he's probably not going to be media friendly. He's a pugnacious old prick. And I think he'll um, wear thin quite quickly. He won't present the image or the dream for the city. He won't be able to define the city's vision. And he'll be gone in one term. And then I'll be sitting there waiting to attack again. As I said, it's a rope dope technique. We'll just take a little break for three years. We've learned a lot along the way. We have a formidable team around us now. Who's we? Well, do there. you? Half your team seem to have left, Leo. <laughs> one volunteer left and one media person who was on a month-by-month -month contract decided to look at other opportunities, but we replaced that person quite quickly and I think we all left on good terms. So it's only one volunteer gone, don't read too much. Jeez, Leo, on. you know, I, I hear this voice of reason, rationality, thinking through the numbers. Maybe if we'd seen more of this Leo Malloy, you might have been the top polling centre-right candidate. Well, I'm also socially liberal, so let's agree that top polling traversed the entire spectrum. Um, candidate, but also it's a learning curve in life. I mean, going back late January, February, we, we did that guy Wiggins show. Now, I wouldn't do that again for obvious reasons. Why not? A trap for a young, well, a trap for a young player. That, you know, they sat on that for what, seven months, They two and a half days to film it, they edited it down to 15 minutes, they agreed by text Guy Williams did to remove the swearing, which was prompted, by the way. They then inserted more swearing rather than remove what was there. So that was definitely a hit job. It was a case of cancelling. You like using the word I thought it was life. good for you, though, overall. Name recognition and everything. I, I knew people who didn't like you, who liked you a lot more after the hit <laughs> job on you. Well, a, a few members of the Labour Cabinet told me that. One of them, well, I won't name them to protect their privacy, but one of them in particular reached out and said, I never was a fan, but I'm definitely one now. So. But, yeah, it was received well by some people, but they were probably already Leo fans, as distinct from the ones who were looking for a reason not to like me, and they decided that... And my profanities were a bit too much. So. But as I said, I did. There's nothing wrong with things. swearing, uh, Leo. There really isn't. Look, I also wonder if you haven't committed the cardinal sin of believing the pollsters. And, and, and well, I'll be, I'll be yeah. honest, Leo, we know each other. We've known each other for a while. You're yeah. a feisty bugger, and I'm kind of amazed that you've gone, oh, let's analyse the data here. I thought your campaign was way more if you like, emotional and organic than 
this rather bureaucratic, technocratic approach to it. Yeah, well, I certainly have a certain flair and panache that the other didn't have in terms of what I brought to the campaign, but it's hideously expensive. You know, our original budget, which I trimmed significantly, was 1.4, and we'd spent a significant portion of that by the time that we decided to pull away. So it, it's, it's an awful lot of money, and the, the mayor doesn't get paid a particularly high salary. There's 13 <laughs> members of AT staff alone who get paid more, so you're not doing it for the money. You've got to do what's right for the city. You've got to believe in the city. All right. That's why I did it, but everything has its limitations. You can't keep throwing good money after bad if, you, if you've convinced yourself that you're not going to win. Okay, you know what? You've convinced me that you actually did it for pretty good reasons, not because you thought well, you, were, go, you were going to get home. If Fesso Collins won this election because I stayed in, I would be held accountable for the rest of my life, and I couldn't live with that. And I'm going to do my absolute best now to make sure he doesn't win. And that's a media story that you should be digging. Look at Fesso Collins' history. You need to have a look. I'll talk to you off air about things you should be looking for with him, but we cannot let him win this election. All right. Um, I saw an amazing piece of left-wing punditry out of Massey University over the weekend on social media suggesting that your votes were somehow miraculously going to go to Afiso Collins. Uh, <laughs> what I thought was that, name Grant coming, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look, it was, it was just claptrap. Um, do you expect your vote to go to Wayne Brown, and is that where you want your supporters to go? Um, we're looking at every other candidate. As I said that on Friday, a lot of them have redeeming features, but is anyone the whole package? No. So you've kind of got to weigh up what each candidate offers the city. I think you've probably nailed it with Wayne at the moment, purely because it needs some, a massive amount of work done on our financial situation here. We're in big, big trouble this city. We're nearly maxed out on the credit card and still living beyond our means. So I think he's probably the right person. Okay, I mean, so why not endorse him? Well, that's uh, something that, you know, we're not in a hurry to do anything at this moment. We're trying to wind the campaign down. We'll have a couple of long lunches this week and <laughs> you know, just do what we do. But at some stage, we'll probably, I don't know, I don't know who's talking to who, you know. I'm not that politically savvy and I don't know Wayne mm. Brown, so I'm certainly not talking to him. But, I mean, people, you know, people will probably reach out to each other. There's a few little bits and pieces mm. to be tidied up. Do you, think, do you think Do you think that Viv Beck needs to, needs to pull her campaign too? Well... It's, I, I read what Banksy said in the paper and I kind of get that, but I also think Viv has a certain charm about her. She's very personable, but she doesn't have mongrel in her, and this is a job for a mongrel, and I think really, I think she has to make an, a, an informed decision there, how she wants to present herself in the last eight weeks. If she wants to show that she can you know, roll the sleeves up and, and trade blows, then she could be still a possibility, but at the moment, based on what she's done to date, I'd have to say there are some question marks around her candidacy. All right. All right. And you're really going to stand again, or is this, you know, Leo gave it a crack and he might get back to running pubs? No, no, I have a, a fierce appetite for politics. I love blood sports, as you know. I like physical encounters, and this really was literally a blood sport. So I quite enjoyed it. Um, I liked it. It was a massive learning curve. I enjoyed the learning. Mm. I put some serious demands on myself in terms of research and reading documents and stuff, and I learned a lot about local body, I learned a lot about um, central government politics, so I think I've learned a lot from stuff, actually. But you learned very little stuff. about Guy Williams' virginity. <laughs> his father, Gary, his father made me ask that question. His father was standing behind me saying, ask him this, he's really sensitive about it, ask him that. So Do you really think it did you that much damage? Do you think this is all Guy Williams' fault? No, it's definitely not his fault. I actually like him, he's actually a good bloke. I took him out for lunch the other day, he came out to see me, took him out for lunch, no, there's definitely no bad blood and no animosity there, no. Not, not one molecule, but, I mean, there's a variety of things that happen. There's this weird thing that some guy on Twitter who was involved with that movie called Tickled edited up a piece where I did a 40-minute piece with... Um, oh, that David Farrier. Yeah, uh, no, not him, his co-guy. Who was oh, his mate. Well, yeah, um, there are anyway, they, they, they edited a 45-minute piece where I was talking about mRNA technology and being pro-vaccination, blah, 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 and they made out that I was part of the Groundswell movement, which I never was. You know, I've been long distance from most people have nothing to do with Groundswell people, but... But, and they just make you look bad, and then, of course, the left-wing feed off it. You know, like the wokesters, they share the information, and suddenly it's a headline story in one of the left-wing periodicals or dailies, and mm. they just make you look like a dickhead. But it's, it's, as I said, I'm learning about politics. There's some things I would never do again, and we just discuss two of them. So. You know what, Leo? It sounds like, and once again, I say knowing you, you relatively well, it sounds like you really have learned a bit in the last few months through this process. Oh, I've never had an, um, you know, never been afraid to learn. I've got a great brain on me, as you know, and I've got a great appetite for learning, so no matter what I'm doing, I never I, said you had I a great go, brain. Um, you know that I have, though. Not <laughs> most of the world knows it. But my soaring intellect as well as my soaring rhetoric. Yeah, the problem with you, though, is you're too humble, aren't you? 
Yeah, I'll take my modesty prevails. <laughs> but I've got a lot of other projects on. I'm looking at doing something down in Queenstown. I'm definitely doing this at Hagenson here. So I've got plenty, you know, my dance card's full. So I'll be kept busy the next three years. And I'll just watch how things evolve and I'll be ready to go again. There is, of course, a little rumour circulating that I might have a run at Central. Yeah. Um, that would have to be something that I'll need to have an earnest talk about. But there has been an overture made, so we're just talking. All right. Um, Leo Malloy, thank you for your contribution. People who get involved in politics, it's a thankless task. Uh, and you've done a rare thing, in my opinion. You have actually, and not just saying to you personally, you've got your ego out of the way of making a rational decision in politics, and that's a pretty, that's a pretty rare thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Leo, we'll catch up for a beer soon, mate. That is Leo Malloy, former mayoral candidate. I'm surprised. I'm surprised at the level of self-reflection and dare I say it, political wisdom from Leo Malloy. He does need to endorse one of the other candidates.